<laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I need some cleaning out again. I just bought a new TV set and I have to find out somebody to take care of. Uh, and so I was glazing today. I was making some new glazes and I was mm -hmm. uh, glazing a couple of pieces that I wanted to try firing because I had a run on tea bowls last, uh, last week, a couple about 16. Mm -hmm. So that's your wheel? This, yeah. is, this is the wheel that I use mostly. Mm -hmm. This is an all-electric wheel, which the vast majority of potters working today use. This is not an all-electric wheel here. No, no, this is a kick wheel with a with a power drive. Okay. With that one, if you want it to go a little bit slower, yep. you have to control that pedal. I see. It doesn't coast, and that's why I don't like it. I see. Good coast. Good coasting action is wonderful mm -hmm. for a potter's wheel. So this one has sort of a flywheel yeah, that houses it. It you know, was designed by yeah. the head of my department at, at Alfred. Mm -hmm. uh, these are wonderful things. <laughs> They're extruded. Extruded. Square tubes out of that thing there. Yeah. And, uh, okay. So is this a thing you built for extruding? No, no, no. Okay. Bought, no, that came from, okay. well, Randall. Ted Randall was head of the department, ceramics department at Alfred when I was a student there and was for many years. Ooh. And he designed this wheel and had a machine shop make it and that's also then later, that's a clay extruder mm -hmm. and a variety of other things too. Don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them on. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, they go, they go on. Here, uh -huh. I don't know if I'm going to like that. You start it with a kick, uh -huh. and then here's a. And as you're working on a potter's wheel, as you're pressing down on it and and centering a ball of clay, it gets uh, it slows down. And as you get it wider, as you're making a ball, for example, you want it to be slowing down so centrifugal force doesn't throw it out. Well, on that one, it has to be with, you know, messing around with that sticky pedal. It's not that it works very easily, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just slows down automatically. Might as well make something. Yep. Or start something. Sure. <laughs> it's got your camera on.
show you something when I get when I get this a little farther along. It's got an air bubble in it, so it's gotten a little wobbly up here, but that's not critical. I want to show you something that that I think is you know, critical. Well, is as It's important in, in my work as that whacking it with a stick or something, but also very subtle differences. I'm using something called a rib here to smooth off the surface and get rid of the throwing lines because the kind of thing that I'm doing, I don't want throwing lines to come on and getting the surface smooth, smooth off a bit. But this is a very subtle but very significant change of what happens here. Didn't work as well as I wanted it on this one, but the irregularity of this edge right in here, which you'll see on a lot of my work, is, mm -hmm. is something that's not, not exactly controllable. So is that sort of feathered edge or what, what happens when you dig something in like this, uh, to, you're coming up and you bring some play up from here and you also get some extra Mm -hmm. And uh, you get you get that uh, that surface which is quite different from and you know that that irregularity that would be should be all around it is uh, is important to me mm -hmm. and it makes it something quite different than if you have just a a very refined perfectly refined sort of collar on that, mm -hmm. on that piece. Very nice. That, that'll make another ball of clay for tomorrow. What am I looking for? There we go. It's a dirty job at, at the, you know, with the best poppers, but I just don't. <laughs> 